And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the Valley of the Judged. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra. And with me, I have my good brother here in the temple, the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadari Enterprises, and the bane of my fucking existence, good brother Xanatrix. We are back. We are back once again, looking at looking at heavens and heresies, and this time around, we are get we are going to be approaching another class, a class that I have been that I have been looking forward to for a while because of because of the sheer fact that this is quite possibly unparalleled, the most snake bitten class in Dungeons and Dragons. To it. And I'm pretty sure someone would say, well, is it a snake-bitten thing now because you don't like the 5e ranger? No. This thing was snake-bitten long before 5e came out. With ranger has been snake-bitten since at least 2. Or at least it's equivalent in 2. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to go over the I'm not going to go over the history again. We we did that we did that kind of thing already. Um Around the same time that Ash and I had that lengthy, lengthy argument about whether or not rangers should be casters. Um, kind of wish Ash was here for this episode so we can show him how it's not necessary. And, you know, if I, if I, if I wanted to be as generous as fucking possible and say, okay, fine, rangers are casters... Why give them the exact same spell list as the druid? Because they're both nature based, don't you know? Well, apparently is because they may have because they've picked because they've picked up a few tricks from 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 be, from being in nature and the whole druid thing. Except, um, a big problem that a big problem that I had had and I had made I had made clear is rangers operating under the assumption that you're going to be in a very British kind of forest. More Tolkien melting pot bullshit. Mm -hmm. uh, or or just or just a heavily temperate kind of kind of forest, whether it be whether it be in whether it be in Eastern or Western Europe. Um. <clears throat> uh, hot take. Monster hunters from Monster Hunter are just the rangers of that world. They track. They take out uh, natural threats to human and other Wyvarian civilizations. Uh, they know how to survive in the wilderness, and they have an animal companion. They also they they also are better eaters. <laughs> the 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 um the sna the light snack in in rise is nice and all but I have a soft spot for the for the um palico for the palico buffet in world. So I have a feeling that sunbreak is going to give us back something more feast like, mm -hmm. since we are going to a more uh, Western European area or Western European inspired area. But that is a. That is a conversation for a much much different time, yeah. Monk. Rails. But the point the point is is that um with a lot as I mentioned when we talked about the when we talked about the Herald, um a lot of the a lot of the multi role kit bashing char kit bash kind of characters from the early days, um and didn't get used all that much simply because they ended up being either gimped versions of other um of other classes, or the or their or what they actually brought to the table didn't mesh particularly um, well. Mm -hmm. um, like for example, the for example the AD and D era berserker. Why pick a berserker when you, when all that it is is just a fighter with worse equipment? Because they can't because they can't use magic items until they're like eleventh. Yeah. Um, and when it comes to when it when it came to the when it came to the bard, which was essentially essentially a rogue cleric kit ba kit bash, I know that I know some people say that's not a, that's not what it was. For all intents and purposes, that's that's that was the that's been the attempt for the longest time. You know, a sk a skill monkey who has who has some divine casting. Um, yep. 
if it weren't, they'd probably end up having the this, this same problem if it weren't for the fact that over time they ended up morphing into the Diplomancer that we know. Now, gr granted, granted, and granted, the there is still the debate. There's still the debate about whether about the castingness of bards, but that's something that we've already talked about. Now, rangers, the idea with them should is supposed is supposed to be um, based on the based on the rangers of the north from from the Lord, from Lord of the Rings. Yeah, the the ranger is very very clearly inspired by. It's in, it's the, supposed to be Aragorn. Yeah. It, oh, yes, and well, Aragorn well. only has the magic taught to him by the elves. And even then, that's not a lot of magic. And if I suppose if I want to get really pedantic about it, it's he's supposed to be the ranger is supposed to be you you're playing as Strider. Yes. Specifically, his 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 identity when he is with the Rangers. Mm -hmm. But eh, but even even with even with that, the big the big problem is any is the fact that because of the because of the fact that they're essentially oh I oh I took I took on a few tricks here and there. That doesn't really work in a game where where every archetype is supposed to be laser focused on this one particular thing that they're good at. Sometimes multiple things that they're good at, but you can usually, but all roads lead to some kind of Rome. It may not always be the the same look in Rome, but all roads lead to a Rome. And I did I did as I've done in the past. I did ask Tanner. Hit for his take, and what he had what he had to say, I, f I found to I found to be interesting. He said, "Rules and exploration aren't too well explained in Vanilla 5e. I mean, they're it they are in the DMG, but mostly ignored by a lot of people. But the bigger problem is that the ranger doesn't really interact with them all that much. There are backgrounds that fulfill through passive text everything that a ranger should be able to do." Or ways of easily getting around threats of the wilderness. Looking at you, good Barry. So with all of so with all of those pro with all of those problems, make the ranger in Five E not feel like a ranger. And then to add insult to injury, the ranger is a pile of shite in a dirty trash fire mechanically. It gets outshone by almost every other class. They've tried to fix it fix this by giving it better subclasses, but its base chassis is lame. It doesn't do anything cool or add anything to the group that's noticeable. Are there ways to multi-class with some dips in Ghostwalker to make good combos? Sure, but that just highlights the fact that Ranger is awful on its own. So in my redesign, as with all of my classes, I wanted the Ranger to feel like a Ranger, and to, as always, change the way the game can be played in a fundamental way. But to summarize, Ranger in 5e is lame because other classes slash backgrounds give a better Ranger feel, so it doesn't fulfill the class fantasy, then it's also mechanical garbage on top of that. Yep, it will. I will also note that they have tried about two or three times in the last five years to give to give alternate um, alternate base class features for the ranger to try and make them interesting. None of them have stuck, especially especially since all of them are all of them are buried in the unearthed arcana PDFs. And you know, if you if you had a if you had a situation where you, where you had where you had an entire player facing book that was all that was all based around certain themes, like you did in addition ago, you might have been able to get people to use the alternate version. I mean, people people will use the unchained classes sometimes in um, Pathfinder. Yeah, I've made I've made it clear that I'm not I'm not a big I'm not a big fan of this whole. Throw a bunch, throw a bunch of shit into an expansion book like they've done. You no, know, whether whether it be whether it be stuff, whether, stuff like Xanathar, uh, Xanathar, Tasha's, or any of the others. Yeah. Yeah, a lot, a lot of it is just ta is just taking refined versions of things that were already in Unearthed Arcana and putting them in one book without any fo without any real focus on theme. Or gimping the Unearthed Arcana version of something and putting it in because. 
if we put it in as is, what it, it, it makes the player character too powerful. I'm like, no. EA, uh, e you're going EA sports route type things here now. Just gimp everything to make you buy more. Which is usually, um, which is whenever people do, the, whenever people make the argument of, oh, 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 they just, oh, they just did this because they want to sell more um, splat books. I'm usually in the camp that that thinks that that argument is bunk. I don't think that's the case with Xanathar's and Tasha's, especially since they just threw random shit in each book. Yeah. The funny thing, the funny thing about the Ranger that I will always find endlessly amusing is. You go back one edition ago, and you don't, ha and you, and a lot of the, a lot of the problems that that people bring up about about them not being able to do, th do things that, or them not being able to do anything effectively, you don't have that problem in fourth edition. In fact, in fact, the range, in fact, the ranger is responsible for one of the most infamous builds due to what due that had to get eroded out. That being um, Kenshiro Orcus Slayer, as it was called, because one because one of the daily powers that you could get could allow you to keep attacking as long as you kept hitting. Which is fantastic. They shouldn't have eroded that. Yeah, but the, unfortunately, you unfortunately some people got would get ridiculously lucky, so they'd be able to do like twenty hit twenty twenty hits. Um. Let me see. Twenty hits. Well, that's certainly. Uh, I'd start wondering if the die might be loaded at that point. <laughs> Either that, or they just really planned out their stats so that even a six can give them a hit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh man. Also, there. Um, Something something that I do I do find interesting with how, with how, with some of the design of of attacks back then is you had the option of either doing more attack or doing less attack and putting debuffs on or not sometimes not even debuffs sometimes just sometimes just extra effects. Mm -hmm. oh. I'm trying to. S I am trying <sighs> to see if I can f see if I can find. Trying to see. Monk, have you ever eaten or drank something that you absolutely hate because waste not want not? Yes. I'm about to do that. Because they fucked my order up with my drinks and gave me lemon lime soda. Three bottles of it. <laughs> I'm about to throw out three bottles. So I'll drink it first to get it the hell out of the way. It'll make everything else last longer. <laughs> and I guess that's how I feel about how the ranger has been for a while actually you ever played a ranger even though you hate it yes why fit for the party <sighs> yeah but um but even even but with there's there's the because of because of the role system that that ha that happened. You could you could easily ha you could have the ranger focus focus on specific targets, and especially if you did the two blade the two blade build, do mult do two or three do two or three attacks um, ev every round, and in some uh. and in some cases attack, then move and attack somebody else. Ah uh, yes, the edge lord Dristowarden build. Um. Uh. I didn't, the last time the last time I did a two weapon build I wasn't even go, I wasn't even going for um for dr for Drizzt. um the I was I was because of the fact that I ha that I ha that I had it that I had it in my in my um in my PS2 at the time I was going for I was going for the Musashi build 
Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Oh. Playing too much Samurai Warriors, Monk. I lie, there's no such thing as too much, but still. I wasn't playing Sam I wasn't playing Samurai Warriors. I was playing Brave Fencer Musashi. You know, there's a ton of games in which a Musashi who wields two swords appears. It could have been any one of them. Fair, I just want I just wanted to make a deep cut. Call it a flex. I like Brave Fencer Musashi. I am unfortunately disappointed by its sequel. Yeah, mo most people are. I loved the visuals, but the, the the soul just wasn't there. But uh, but we're but we're getting on we're getting on the we're getting off the rails that we need to get back on. So when it comes so. The Heavens and Heresies Ranger, we kind of knew a little bit about it. Um, as I rec as I recall, um, I think Tanner had mentioned at one point that it seemed that both hip that both that both ourselves and him were on a were on a similar motif of of the whole tr of a trophy system. Um, yeah. And, in and incidentally, and if you incidentally, folks, if you want if you want an ideal version of how a, of how a of how the typical ranger is get is going to work in a, in a fantasy RPG, Geralt. Geralt of Geralt of Rivia is a, is is how is how to do it. Ah, oh, fuck. There you go. My best Geralt impression. I can't get the gravel down. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, I could with enough practice, but I can't get the gravel down. Yeah. But a lot, knowing a lot about how monsters operate, spending spending a good amount of time tracking them and preparing the right environment to actually confront them, and you and having a variety of tricks at at one's disposal instead of utilizing um, raw ab raw ability. I mean, witchers do use raw ability as well, but they use as many tricks as possible to put the fight in their advantage. Because. Mm -hmm. While they may be mutated, and uh, and literally, literally all witchers are are a product of the worst sort of um, <laughs> Doctor Mengele uh, uh, type human experimentation possible in a world of magic. Um, <laughs> they are still mortal, so they can still die. Mm-hmm. But that, but that brings us to Heavens and Heresies' take on the Ranger, and as always, your as always when it comes to the opening text, this is this is your, this is your opening spot to shine, Zan. Okay, okay, let me. This one's gonna take some effort. <laughs> <clears throat> A lot of people see us rangers and think we love nature. I guess that much is true. But that doesn't mean we are at peace with it. Nature isn't peaceful. It's chaotic, wild, dangerous, and downright terrifying at times. And they're right. I love it. I love the thrill of the hunt. I love the anticipation as my arrow flies towards its mark. I even love the terror I feel as I flee into the woods, becoming hunted myself. Being a ranger is about preparation and execution. It's about relying on one's wits just as much as one's body. And it's about helping others to do the same. Because, let's face it, at some point we all need to venture through the woods. Rangers help you survive that venture. Annie, <laughs> the snare, no huntsman. <laughs> I told you, high-pitched, squeaky, and energetic. Yeah. I, I still don't think it sounds much like my girlfriend, though, so... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, but it does sound appropriately cursed. <laughs> Is it as cursed as the as the prancing dragon you inflicted on me earlier in the week? No. You know, uh, living in the moonlight, dancing in the sunlight, having a wonderful time. Prancing Velcana, everybody. Go look it up. <laughs> oh god. Any anyway, so core, abil core ability requirements 
A ranger relies on their wits in order to survive. You use your wits modifier when making an attack roll with a spell you cast or skill attack you use. Now, this is this is a bit of a unique uh, core ability requirement. For all the other martial classes that we've been seeing, it's usually something else uh, along, uh, along with strength or dex. Um, and then, of course, the Inquisitor, who is the true gish, was strength and dex with their uh, intuition. It was intuition. Pretty sure it was intuition. Yeah, it's intuition. Mm-hmm. Um, but we know here that, uh, spoiler, spoiler, I mean, we, we would eventually reveal this going literally half a page down. Um, they have no spell list. This is not a spell-based class, but they also don't have a, a an attack or dexterity core requirement. Mm-hmm. And with, and with that in with that partic- with that in with that in mind um next we have proficiencies so you're proficient in light armor medium armor and light shields so so, so you so you don't have to do the the two the two knife approach as a ranger you can if you want to you just don't have to you have simple proficiency in all weapon types hmm. You are proficient in either your constitution or dexterity defense, depending on your core abilities. If constitution is a core ability, you're proficient in constitution defense. It, if dexterity is a core ability, you're proficient in your dexterity defense instead. And if both, you can you pick the higher. If both are equal, you choose one. You choose one or the other. And you're proficient in wits defense. Yep. Um. Uh. You learn two. You can learn two languages of your choice. You gain proficiency in the investigation skill and proficiency, and, and proficiency and one t- and one tier of expert skill. So proficiency, proficiency is the base bonus mm-hmm. addition, mm-hmm. addition, and then tiers of expertise are extra bonus on top. Yeah, I, I, I feel like that needs to be reworded a little, because because it, it, the way it was worded kind of threw me off. Yeah, you gain proficiency in the investigation skill, um, proficiency and one tier of expertise in the nature skill. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're already proficient in, or if you already have proficiency in nature, you get two tiers of expertise instead. Mm-hmm. I like the dev note here. Uh, since rangers are a wit-based class, and wits grants a character's extra proficiencies, they are going to have a lot more skills than the two listed here most of the time. All right, we all right. We got a bit of skill monkey. I'm pretty sure we'll get a little bit more skill, skill monkey. Let's see. You are also you also gain proficiency in either alchemy or culinary arts. So they're either cooks or potion masters. Mm-hmm. Got it. Um, at this point, I would at this point I would bring up um, Link getting ber- the art of Link getting berated by Gordon Ramsay. It's fucking raw. Uh huh. And then he eats it. Let's see. As as a ranger, you have a number of base vitality equal to half your level plus your wits modifier, plus one. You gain two additional vitality at fifth level, and one additional vitality at eleventh and seventeenth levels. It's an interesting vitality spread. Mm-hmm. Doesn't seem like a, a big one, but it, it's it seems nice. Uh, it's still the half level plus uh, core ability mod plus one uh, schema we've been seeing for base. Yeah, it's not the I don't I don't think it's the it's not going to be challenging the king of vitality use anytime soon. That honor is still going to the to the druid. Spend all my vitality to do all the things. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Then we have the raising the death flag. Let's see it. Let's see what we've got here. When a ranger raises the death flag, they are instantly restored to full HP, gain temporary HP equal to their HP maximum, grant allies temporary HP equal to their HP maximum, their movement increases by 15 feet, and they gain an additional action during the course of a round. 
The temporary HP granted counts as that granted by the Hunter's Rally feature for the purposes of granting bonuses. Or the Hunter's Rally being uh, the Rally feature of a of one of the archetypes. Then, mm-hmm. um, now, they the word there in there is enough time to choke a donkey. Um, when they gain temporary HP equal to their maximum HP, I'm going to assume that's the the maximum of the Ranger. Mm-hmm. But when they grant allies temporary HP, is it going to be equal to the Ranger's maximum HP, or is it going to be equal to the maximum HP of each ally? That needs to be clarified here. I'm guessing it. I'm guessing it's each ally, but honestly, I could go either way on that. It, it, it's vague enough that I would want that clarification. Mm-hmm. Um, additionally, uh, since we were just talking about allies, and it just continues from there, um, their movement increases by 15 feet. I assume is just the ranger that's raising the death flag. Mm-hmm. Um, but coming right off of the end of talking about allies gaining things, that can still be a little bit, um, a little bit confusing. If I were actually going to, to rearrange this a little, because for clarity, I would say when a ranger raises the death flag, they are instantly restored to full HP. Their movement increases by 15 feet. They gain an additional action during the course of a round, uh, they gain temporary HP equal to their HP maximum, and grant allies temporary HP equal to their HP maximum. That way, uh, all the way up until the very end of that sentence, it, you know it's just referring to the ranger. And then the very end, you have it mentioning allies getting temporary HP. That way, uh, you know that, oh, now allies are getting something. And it also leads into the next sentence of the temporary HP granted counts as that granted by the Hunter's Rally feature for the purposes of granting bonuses. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd also... I, I don't know if the Hunter's Rally feature is identical to the Fighter's Rally rally feature, and I'm sure we'll find out down in the Hunter. Um, but... Or if you meant as per the fighter's rally feature, I'm not sure. Um, that may need some some clarification as well. So the the death flag here, I, mostly I just have a, a, an issue of syntax more than anything. <laughs> this isn't a, this is nothing wrong with it. I just syntactical clarification is required. <laughs> mm-hmm. Starting gear, you begin with either Tier 1 Light or Medium Armor, three weapons of your choice, the Harvester's Adventuring Kit, or uh, one other Adventuring Kit of your choice, and three Tier 1 Potions or Poisons. Wow, that's a lot of Tier 1 Potions or Poisons. I think mm-hmm. that's the most we've seen on anybody as starting gear. Yeah, you're you're starting out kitted out, which is appropriate for the Ranger Fantasy. Um. So we start out with Outdoorsman. So you may add your proficiency bonus to your initiative. You increase your movement by 5 feet, your climb speed by 5 feet, your swim swim speed by 5 feet, and your carry capacity by 2. You may ignore a number of severity of environmental conditions equal to your wits modifier plus your proficiency modifier. You You may use your action in order to identify a natural location, such as a body of water, forest, or a mountain. If you do, you learn any of the reputations of the target, if it has any, unless those reputations are hidden magically. So basically, you can use an action to identify that cave in the distance. Oh man, that's the that's the cave of the troll fuckers. We gotta get out of there. Mm-hmm. We, 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 we can't stay here, guys. Sorry. Uh, At 9th level, you gain one tier of expertise in the nature skill, and your movement, climb speed, and swim speed increase by 5 feet. At 13th level, your carry capacity increases by 2, and you may double your wits modifier for the purposes of calculating resistance to environmental conditions. 13th level, if you've got a plus 4 wits mod, now you've got a plus 8 wits mod for for resisting environmental (laughs) conditions. Wow, that means you could that means you could ignore eight severity of environmental conditions. 
I don't know. This says resistance rather than the ignoring severity. Um, and if we look at re resistance, um, I think I think the I think the way it's I get I think this is one of those cases where clarification is needed because the way it's written. Since it's built, since it's building off of the base level of outdoorsman, I do think, I do think it's not, it's not about resistance; it's about ignoring, um, ignoring that amount of severity. All that it means is yeah. that instead of doing wits pro plus proficiency, it's wits times two, plus proficiency. Yeah, I I would agree that that's probably the intent, but using the word resistance capitalized in such a way, um, makes me think of the resistance rules from the actual base mechanics document. Mm -hmm. So, the other, and that that's that's a lot to put on one feature, but I'll take it. You also gain trophy hunter. You may use a material which you have harvested from a creature as a trophy, granting you and your allies special qualities based on its resonance. The effects of the trophy apply to you and allies within thirty feet of you. See the trophy hunter table below. Each resonance has a number of options listed under it. When you gain your trophy, you must select one of these options. Once you once you choose, you may not switch unless you obtain another trophy. You may only receive the benefits of one trophy at a time. When you gain the effects of a new trophy, you lose the effects of your previous trophy. At 14th level, you may harvest and tune to the effects of an additional trophy. You may not attune to multiple trophies from the same creature type. Ooh. So let's see what we have as far as tr as far as the type. We have six types of resonance. So first one is psychic, which gives you which. Gives you either. Mm -hmm. You choose one effect. Mm -hmm. So there's two effects here for psychic. Um, gives you either telepathic link. You and your allies may communicate telepathically, or fey resilience increase your focus by one point. Elemental only thing. gives you technically one, but elemental resistance. When you're dealt damage from a source matching that of the specific elemental resistance, which makes up your trophy, excluding bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing, you may use your reaction and gain resistance to that damage until the end of your next turn. So I, I assume that an elemental resonance is going to come pre-assigned with the, the type of element it's getting. For example, you just... Uh, killed uh, a fire uh, a fire djinn mm -hmm. or some sort of fire elemental being and you get the trophy off of it being a fire elemental attuned trophy so you would you would then be able to use the reaction to gain resistance from fire mm -hmm. and interesting next is somatic either get re you either get regeneration increase your fortitude by 1 point or hardness you gain plus 1 damage reduction um, either of those is going to be nice uh -huh. next is light slash darkness you either gain keen eye you may ignore two severity of the hidden condition when creatures attempt to hide from you or ambusher your threat range increases by 1 while you have the benefits of the hidden condition Probably going to tie into a, one of the ranger archetypes mm -hmm. later. I can almost guarantee it. Oh, yeah. Um, next is Rift. You either get Aetheric Resistance, increase your defenses by 2 against spell attacks, or Quickened, increase your movement by 5 feet, when you're already getting more movement than others. Um, and, lastly Could be is, useful. Go ahead. and lastly is Fate. You either get Hunter's Fate... Whenever you and your allies roll a critical hit on an attack roll, the next attack against that creature by a creature other than the one who scored the critical hit is made with advantage. Ooh, that could cause a cascading critical effect. Especially if you've got things expanding crit ranges. Mm-hmm. Ooh. The other is Fate's Reversal. Whenever you or your allies roll a 1 for an attack, the next attack made by them or you is made with advantage, and the threat range increases by 2 for that attack. Ah! So that's a, a fail forward right there. Oh yeah. 
That is most definitely a fail forward. Oh, you fumbled on this uh, on this attack here. Well, uh, the next attack you make is going to be made with advantage, and you have an increased threat range. <laughs> Inquisitor misses. <laughs> oh, oh no! My threat range that's already ten <laughs> bots on the die is now twelve. Twelve, and you're rolling die. two. Of them. <laughs> um, and I'm rolling two of them and taking the higher number. Oh no! Whatever will I do? I doubt that there's any <laughs> extra effect if both of them, if bo if you're rolling advantage and both of them crit, because that would, no be, extra that would be ridiculous. No, no extra effect. You just it means you ro you uh, you have a chance of rolling your critical threat range, which is actually wider than your auto uh, auto hit range. But then you could also roll your auto hit range along with your critical threat range. Mm -hmm. So, we also have a dev note of note. All materials, meaning all rewards slash currency in Heavens and Heresies, have a resonance, but it requires no extra effort on the GM's part, really. It's already pre-built into the mechanics of the game. Also, how do, how do you have a favored enemy type mechanic without the problems inherent into a favored enemy type mechanic? Oh yeah, the, oh yeah, favorite enemy. The ranger the ranger attacks more powerfully th through the power of racism. <laughs> oh, this is how. If an area has enemies with a psychic resonance, it's going to be featuring psychic attacks, meaning extra focus will be helpful for that area. And if the party moves to a different area, say one that features a lot of elemental enemies that deal lightning damage, they're going to drop an elemental lightning material which can be used to grant resistance to lightning. Boom. I'm awesome. No more, I have Faye as my favorite enemy. Too bad we never fought a Faye in this campaign. Or equally bad. I have Faye as my favorite enemy. Good thing every single enemy we fight is a Faye. <laughs> He's not wrong. This is a very good way to circumvent uh, circumvent the favorite enemy type issue. The same, the same way we circumvented it. Mm-hmm. I think in our I think in our approach we I think in our approach we obviously we ha obviously we had to we had to stick to our source material but uh but it's but no no actual no actual job track grants it it's a equipment thing yeah meaning that being the person who's probably going to be the most dangerous with this sort of thing is going to be the fighter <laughs> so, the, the GM. Ah, you 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 brought in you brought in you brought in a you brought in a fey killing sword in, in a fight with giants. Oh, really? You thought I just brought in the fighter? Okay, okay then. Time to switch. <laughs> switch. Mm -hmm. Um, at se anyway, at second level you gain hunter's rally. So looks looks like we were wrong. You thought you thought Hunter's Rally was a subclass feature. Nope, we're getting we're getting it relatively quickly out of the gate. Indeed. You may expect. But I still think Rally Rally is a bit of a. Uh, uh, it's going to be a little bit confusing, but with the the fighter Rally, but that's okay. You get you may expend a number of vitality equal to half your level rounded up whenever you push forward or rest. You gain temporary hit points equal to your fortitude plus wits modifier times the number of expended vitality. You may also use this ability on allies within 40 feet of you whenever you push forward or rest, but must expend a separate amount of vitality. For each of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For, each of, for each of them. As long as a creature has temporary hit points from this feature, it gains a plus one to its threat range. At 10th level, is... whenever you use your Hunter's Rally feature on an ally, you gain hit points equal to your Wits modifier. In addition, any creature with temporary hit points from your Hunter's Rally feature gains an additional plus one threat range. Does that mean they get a now total we... of two? Now, yes. what, now I think we understand the, um, the real, da the real um, nastiness of raising the death flag from earlier. That, and we also understand all the... Uh... Blesses and boons from the paladin with the ranger. Mm -hmm. I give you crit, and you make me crit. Let's we all crit together. 
You know, normally for the... If you're going to be crit fishing this much, make sure you already got your permit. Otherwise, the DNR is going to come for us. <clears throat> Don't you know, Monk? Uh, crit fishing is a year-round permit. You can just buy it yearly. Yeah. Yeah, but do, yeah, but do you have to catch and release? No. When crit fishing, you always eat your kill. I hope, I hope to I hope to God you I hope to God you don't catch Northerns with that. <laughs> if you don't if you don't get any of the jokes that we just mentioned in the in the last minute, come to Minnesota, then you'll get them. <laughs> just um, for my Southern friends, don't come up here in January. If you do, you have only yourself to blame. I mean. Go up there in January. It'll it'll put hair on your chest, guys. <laughs> and anyway. immediately freeze it off again. Mm -hmm. next, <laughs> anyway, next we have resupply. Once per rest, you may resupply your party without having to visit a normal resupply location, such as a town or your cart. At 14th level, you can utilize this feature twice per rest. And then we have a lengthy dev note. Resupply is the other recover mechanic next to pushing forward and resting. When a party resupplies, they fill, they refill all of their potions, poison, poison slash adventuring kits that they may have used up since the last resupply. The refill is automatic once a character buys a potion. They have it forever and they get it back whenever they resupply without needing to buy it again. This is the same with poisons and kits and anything else like that. It's also why the game has an important but very streamlined encumbrance system. It allows people to adventure in ways that are fun without the rules lawyers saying, well, since it doesn't cost anything to resupply, I'll just carry 1,000 potions. Now, some might argue that you can take your cart into combat with you, and sure, you can do that. But resupply is a recovery mechanic that takes time. It takes time to rebrew your potions slash poisons. It takes time to dig them out of the cart slash unpack them out of their protective cases. It's not something you could do in an encounter. Um, I just ima I just imagine someone having someone having the alchemist a alchemist kit and ca and carrying the thing around like it's the, like it's beyond the grave's coffin. <laughs> you know, and has and has perfected the art of being able to make uh, being able to make explosions very quickly. You know, open up the kit, whip something together real fast, and then and then throw it, and enemy go boom. Yeah. Oh. And at third level, you gain your ranger archetype, which we will get we will get into those later. You also gain terrain expert. For the purposes of calculating the effects of the hindered condition, you may consider the condition to be three less while it's affecting you. You are still considered to be hindered three, and this and thus would need to have quickened four applied to you in order to be considered quickened one. You gain features depending on which terrain type surrounds you. See the terrain expert table below. You may only benefit from one feature from the table at any given time, even if a landscape has elements from multiple types of terrain. Though you may choose which benefit you may receive and switch after pushing forward or resting. At sixth level. You share the bonuses you gain from terrain with allies within 60 feet of you. You do not share the hinder ignore aspect of terrain as expert. So let's see what we've got. Cavern. You may ignore three severity of the hidden condition granted to a creature or object from darkness. Desert. You need only consume half as much water to stave off dehydration and may ignore two severity of environmental conditions. Which is saying something, because you're already going to be ignoring a good amount of environmental conditions out of the gate. Forest slash jungle. Difficult terrain gr grants you three severity of the hidden condition. Uh, grassland slash plain. Your movement speed increases by five feet. Again. Mm -hmm. Hill. You gain proficiency in the investigation skill. If you already have proficiency, you gain one tier of expertise in that skill. Mountain. Your climb speed increases by 10 feet. Swamp oh. slash marsh. 
Whenever you are dealt poison or acid damage, you may use your reaction in order, in order to gain resistance to that damage until the end of their next turn. Underwater slash coastal, your swim speed increases by 10 feet. And ruin slash dungeon, you gain proficiency in the history skill. If you already have proficiency, you may gain one tier of expertise from that skill. I'd like to point out that uh, the hill benefit on the ranger themselves is going to automatically give them at least one ex one tier of expertise because they already get proficiency in investigation. Mm -hmm. But this it's worded this way so that way when you pass it to your allies within 60 feet of you, they either get proficiency or one tier of expertise, depending. Mm hmm but I, I I certainly like I certainly like that approach because I'd I'd always said that ra that rangers need more terrain benefits. Yes. Oh. Them and druids both get them. Druids get them more mystically. They get them more. Well. N naturally. Haha. <laughs> and anyway, at fifth level, you gain eye for weakness. When you make an attack, you may target one additional creature as long as it is your reach or as long as it is in your reach or range. When you make an attack against a single creature, you deal two of your weapon's damage dice in rather than one, and your threat range increases by one. So so our art so our bow related archer is a case of fuck that guy and fuck that guy over there too. Or fuck that guy twice. Mm-hmm. Um, so this this also this also easily allows for the for for what people would expect with the dual wield kind of archer. Mm -hmm. And then at higher levels, uh, when you make an attack, you may target one additional creature as long as it's in your reach or range. Uh, for a total of three creatures at eleventh, and a total of four creatures at seventeenth. Uh, when you make an attack against a single creature, you deal an additional dice of your weapon's damage dice for a total of three weapon dice at 11th and four weapon dice at 17th. Four weapon dice on a single creature at 17th. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, and then your threat range for attacks increases by an additional one for for a total of uh, additional two at 11th and additional three at uh, 17th. Oh, man. So that means at 17th, you could do... You could do four attacks against the same creature at four weapon dice each. Uh, I'm not sure where you're getting the additional attacks. Or at the at the very least, four, at the very least, four creatures at four weapon dice each. Um, well, one I, one one weapon die. You have to attack only a single creature to get the extra weapon dice. I I see where it's going. So you've got so you've got to choose between. Um, between multi-attack or fuck that guy up. Yes. Uh, but your threat range at 17th level, when you get an additional 3 to your threat range, that makes your threat range almost as as big as your auto-hit range. No, it makes it as big as your auto-hit range. From uh, from 16, for, from 17 to 20. 17, 18, 19, 20. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see. You also, you also gain a bonus general or martial feat. And you can choose an additional feed from one of those categories at 11th and 17th level. Mm -hmm. And at 20th level, you gain predation. Your critical hits inflict a wound, making creatures vulnerable, hindered, marked, and weakened. And you may ignore a number of severity of the hidden condition from any source equal to your wits modifier. I see a... Uh... I see Tanner hasn't yet gotten some of the flavor text. <laughs> flavor text goes here. Flavor. <laughs> oh, it's it's okay, Tanner. We understand. Yeah. So next is so so when it comes to the um, Ranger Conclaves, the their particular subclasses, we have four of them. The first one is Guide Conclave. Which at third level gets scatter. If you are within the area of effect of an attack which targets an area, you may use your reaction in order to move half your movement speed. If, as a result of this movement, you would leave the attack's area of effect, the attack automatically misses you. 
Well, this, well, th say, say hello to Fireball Dodging. And this is also the same for your allies. Mm -hmm. if, I mean, it's literally the same, the same words, except instead of if you, it's if an ally. Mm -hmm. Next is Guided Movement. After taking your turn in initiative order, or after you have acted if initiative is not being tracked, allies within 60 feet may use any remaining movement as their own movement. You also gain proficiency in the history skill and have advantage on any ability history check made to recall information about a specific natural location or landmark. And as an example of that movement, uh, that movement boon, uh, there's actually in the text, for example, if you end your turn with 15 feet of unused movement, the next ally to move in the initiative order could use 10 feet of that movement, leaving 5 feet of bonus movement for any remaining allies to use on their turns. That's... I like that. This the also, movement pool this at also, that point. This also means that... Um... That you can that you can still that the movement action can still be can still be utilized if you're dealing with say a sniper type of ranger. Yes. Now, my question here is. No. Okay. No. Never mind. That question is answered. Uh, because it says they can use that remaining movement as their own movement. That means they can also use it for quick actions that have movement costs. I get the feeling that was uh, that was also part of the intent. Yes. And I'm pretty almost I'm pretty definitely. I'm pretty sure when Tanner when when Tanner gets to this part in the in the recording, um, that's going to be a, that's going to be a case of playing to his ego. <laughs> a little bit. Oh. Um, but I I uh, I'd like to point out that this also justifies all the extra fucking movement you get from all your all your base stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can move. You know. 20 feet more than my than my compatriots can but i'm gonna move at the same pace as them so that they have 20 feet of spending money here you go guys <laughs> oh. uh. especially especially since um obviously in order to benefit from this they still have to be within 60 feet of you yeah so moving at the same pace is actually a boon mm-hmm so next is watch your step at seventh level. Allies within thirty feet of you may benefit from the environmental conditions effect of your outdoorsman feature. <laughs> what? Which means they get to ignore severities of environmental conditions equal to to wits mod plus proficiency mod. Yep. Is it going to be your? Is it going to be your wits mod or their wits mod? I'm. That's going to be clarification. Yeah, I'm assume. It, I'm assuming it's your wits mod. I um, would assume that that they're using your wits mod as if it they were own, as if it were mm -hmm. their own for the for the purposes of this uh, feature. Yep. But that's a good clarification we need there, Tanner. Mm -hmm. uh, next is strongback. Your carrying capacity increases by an amount equal to your wits modifier. Now you can carry even more potions and poisons and other stuff. Mm -hmm. oh. Let's see. Then at 11th level, you gain Tangential Experience. You may choose to gain the benefits of an additional terrain from your Terrain Expert feature, in addition to the current terrain in which you reside. You may change your choice after a rest, but may not gain the benefits from the same terrain t type twice. You may share these secondary benefits with allies within 60 feet of you. That's almost like the stance dancing of the disciple. Mm -hmm. So, and this is at 11th level. So, at uh, with a with terrain expert, you had the uh, at sixth level you can uh, you can share the bonuses, and then. Uh, Oh man, that's at eleventh level. You get two terrain types and and can share both. That's uh, that could be really really useful, mm -hmm. especially if you're just like I'm gonna give myself planes. By the way, there's another movement speed plus five feet that I can give to my allies. 
Let's see. And at 15th level, you gain Pathfinder. Increase your movement by 15 feet. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I like the flavor text for this one. It's this way. And even if it's not, I'm pretty sure this way is faster. I think we've all been there when it comes to trying to navigate with a map. Oh. And at, at 18th level, you gain Reactionary. You may use an additional reaction each round. And given that one of those reactions is getting out of the way so that so that fireball that got thrown around missed you. Well if he try if yep. he tries to get if if he if somebody tries again, then then that one'll also miss. Yep. Um Or, you know there are other little things you can do with your reactions. Mm-hmm. Not to mention if you've got a disciple in the party passing off reactions to other people. Oh, yeah. All the synergy. I love all the synergy. Mm -hmm. So, next is the Survivor Conclave. Wait a minute, where's dog meat? Really? I calls it like I sees it, monk. Really? I calls it... Like I sees it. Anyway, you get at third level. You gain dogged resilience. <laughs> You're welcome. You you regain a number of vitality equal to your wits modifier. Whenever you push forward, if you would start a turn unconscious with zero hit points, you gain one hit point at the start of your turn and then lose one hit point at the end of your turn. This lost hit point is resolved after resolving the willpower mechanic. Dev note, generally when, generally when you end a turn with zero hit points, you lose one willpower. This mechanic bypasses that, but the ranger is still weak to taking damage in the initiative order, which also causes the which also causes loss of willpower. While you have only one hit point remaining, your weapon attacks have plus one increased threat range. The flavor text on that. Seriously, I'm fine. I've bled worse than this. Sounds like something I'd say. Mm -hmm. Let's see, next is staunch wounds. Creatures which have temporary hit points from your Hunter's Rally feature may, on their turns, remove one temporary hit point in order to reduce the severity of the afflicted condition by one, and may remove two temporary hit points in order to reduce the severity of the weakened or vulnerable conditions by one. This feature may not be used on curses, wounds, or diseases. I think I understand, I think I understand why... Tanner told me this week about the changes to Afflicted. Yeah. So, at 7th level, you gain Preventative Measures. You may utilize your Hunter's Rally without pushing forward. When you do, you must utilize a quick action at 10 feet for each vitality you expend. Interesting. Interesting. I'm glad it's in this one and not in um not in the guide conclave because that would get ridiculous. <laughs> See, you also gain tough bastard. For the purposes of calculating a condition's effects, you may consider the afflicted, vulnerable, weakened, and stunned conditions to be two less while they are affecting you. Point out the the flavor texts on each of these actually. For staunch wounds, it said, okay, maybe I should take a look at that. Uh, for preventative measures, it's, we'll just put a little extra juice on that one. Don't want it falling off. And uh, for tough bastard, we've got, what do you mean I'm bleeding? I'm always bleeding. You should be worried if I wasn't bleeding. <laughs> Why do these all sound like things I would say? Because because we're because we all have a terrible sense of humor, that's why. 
<laughs> so at 11th level, you gain Improved Hunter's Rally. Your Hunter's Rally adds an additional amount of temporary hit points equal to your proficiency bonus. At 15th, uh. at 15th level, you gain Weather the Storm. Each time you are hit with an attack, the targeted defense increases by 2, and you gain plus 1 damage reduction until the beginning of your next turn. This feature stacks with itself. Um. Give it time. It'll blow over. Maybe. I think, I think this... I th Yeah, I had I had to I had to double check it to make sure I wasn't misreading it. And at 18th level, you gain not on my watch. Allies within 30 feet of you also gain the bo the benefits of your tough bastard feature. <laughs> These the survivors the survivor conclave certainly lives up to its name. You're just a bunch of cockroaches that will not fucking die. So next is the Huntsman Conclave. At third level, you gain the Hunter's Mark. Um, thankful, thankfully, d thankfully does not. Thankfully, it it does not make you fear the old blood. <laughs> And it certainly does not look like the brand, like a legally distinct version of the brand of sacrifice. <laughs> you may utilize a 15-foot quick action and mark a creature that you can see to yourself and allies within 60 feet of you until the beginning of your next turn. The severity of the condition is equal to your wits modifier. While marked, the creature is considered to be vulnerable too. Um, I think there's a little bit of a mishmash here. A little bit of a of a of a chop up with the words. There might have been some edits made that then made other things superfluous. Yeah. Um, such as mark a creature that you can see to yourself and allies within sixty feet of you. I I I would uh, I would say that it's a. Uh, Mark a creature that you can see within sixty feet of you. Mm -hmm. There's probably a a, a a a bunch of words there that can be removed, and I will actually make that suggestion now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, you know, and you mark it within the beginning of the turn. Now, the condition you're afflicting them with is marked. Is what I'm assuming. Yeah. That you, that you afflict them with marked, and it says the severity of the of marked is equal to your wits mod. Whereas, and then because they are marked, the creature is also vulnerable too. Which, if everybody remembers, vulnerable increases the threat range against that creature. So you get more critical chance against them. Plus, if the vulnerable condition exceeds their focus or their fortitude, they uh, get disadvantage on magical defensive roles and physical defensive roles, uh, respectively. Mm -hmm. So... Vulnerable two is pretty good. Nothing to nothing to sneeze at. Mm -hmm. So next is tracker. Your movement increases by fifteen feet. You may only use this movement to move towards a marked creature. Oh, the huntsman's going to be our crit fisher. At seventh level, you gain improved trophy. The range of your trophy's effects increases to 60 feet. Jesus. And your trophies grant an additional bonus, as shown on the Improved Trophy Hunter table below. So let's see. Psychic, gain, mer you get morale boost. You and allies within range have an additional one willpower. Elemental resistance from elemental. When you deal damage from... A when you deal damage from a source matching that of the specific elemental resonance which makes up your trophy, you may re-roll a one, any one, a, an ones or twos typo on the damage dice. You you must keep the new rolls. Um. 
Okay. Somatic grants improved regeneration. Increase your fortitude by an additional point. Light or darkness gains improved stealth. Whenever you would benefit from the hidden condition, you may increase the severity of the condition on yourself by two. Fate grants improved hunter's fate. When you or your allies score a critical hit, you may reroll any ones and twos on the damage dice. You must keep the new rolls. And Rift grants aggressive. You and your allies may increase your movement by an additional 10 feet as long as you use this bonus movement to move toward an enemy. Now, my, my uh, request for clarification here is, uh, are these in addition to whichever of the particular trophy um, effects you choose? Because other than elemental, everything else had two, two effects you could choose from. And then on top of that, somatic regeneration was one of the two things you could choose. If you do get these effects additional to what you're already getting from the original trophy hunter, does this mean that if you chose hardness on somatic, you get an, a, just a plus one to fortitude from this improved regeneration? There's a little bit of interaction clarification that I really think we need here. Mm -hmm. uh, at 11th level, you gain predatory strike. Your threat range for attacks against creatures with full hit points increases by three. <laughs> I can get a critical hit if you're at full HP. <laughs> oh, you're going to oh, mark you're... you? <laughs> Go ahead. I'm going to mark you. I'm going to run at you, and I'm going to and I'm going to swing at you with a, with my threat range now increased to six spots on the dice because of the three from Predatory Strike, the two from you being vulnerable by my mark. Oh wait, excuse me. The Paladin has blessed me, so it's another three. That's nine spots on the die. <laughs> I think you're really going to like this. Yep. Let's see. Improved, hunt, improved Hunter's Mark. Your Hunter's Mark feature now grants a severity of the weakened condition equal to your wits, minimum four. So not only do they get two vulnerability, they get four weakened. Equal to your wits. To your wits mod or to your actual wits? I think it's supposed this to be the wits. I think it's supposed to be your wits mod. Well no, because if it's a minimum of four, not a maximum four, a minimum of four, I think this is your wits score. <laughs> Which would be at twenty sever twenty severity of weakened might be a little bit excessive. Yeah, I. Hmm. I think I think I think the intention is wits modifier, um, but also setting a minimum of four for a fifteenth level feature. I mean, feels nice. It feels like it's scaling properly, but I don't know why that minimum is there. I, I uh, I'm just kind of questioning the uh, the ethos behind it. That's all. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like it'd be fun. Yeah. I and... mark you. Now you have two Voln and four weakness. Mm -hmm. At 18th level, you gain Call of the Hunt. Allies within 60 feet of you gain the benefits of your predatory strike. So not only are you ridiculously crit, but now everybody around you, every, all of your buddies are ridiculously crit fishing. Yeah, this is... This is our crit fisher. Told you. <laughs> this is the. This isn't just the leader. This isn't just our crit fisher. This is the leader of the crit fisher cruise boat. Mm -hmm. Um. Now the last. This is the guy that that you would take to to crit fishing in shark waters. Oh yeah. So. The there is the last one. The beast master conclave is. Something that we're going to have to skip over for the time being. saying It's incomplete. Mm -hmm. Saying, because the dev note here says, Like the Circle of the Depths druid, I need to stop procrastinating and input the companion co mechanics before I can write this archetype, but all the other archetypes are completed. 
I've done a bunch of work on the animal handling artistry, but I still need to streamline it so that class features can interact with it more smoothly. Update. I recently ran the animal he handling artistry through a playtest and it performed really smoothly, so this will be integrated into the game relatively soon. So, unf but it, so it sounds like the Beastmaster Conclave is going to be for those who still want to do the whole animal companion thing. I mean, the name, the name's the thing. This we're just we're just watching the Beastmaster movie. That's all it is. Yeah, just um, if we do that, make sure that we're watching Beastmaster, not Beastmaster Two. There's no such thing as Beastmaster Two, Monk. What are you talking about? Touche. I wish there. I wish there was a sequel, but <sighs> sometimes there is such a thing as too much of a good thing. Is that is that like when people were asking for a su for an anime based on Tsukihime? That doesn't exist either, Monk. Why do you keep bringing up things that never happened? I think you know why. <laughs> but overall. I'd say I'd say this I'd say um first off the ranger here is clearly I wouldn't say it's the ultimate team player out of out of the classes we've seen so far. I think that honor still goes to the paladin. But I okay, so yes, the paladin is very team player because of the way his blessings work. But every class has had a way to synergize with anyone else. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really good part of this uh, this particular design ethos that uh, that Tanner has mm -hmm. is that yes, these all these all complete some sort of fantasy, some sort of some sort of class fantasy for people. Mm -hmm. a, a specific way they want to play a type of character. But additionally, they're all geared towards both shining on their own and assisting their allies, mm -hmm. which is a hard balance to strike. Mm -hmm. Now, when it com when it when it comes to the when it comes to the this particular ranger, um, there's definitely there's definitely a whole lot of critting. I think he, I think even the base chassis has a, has a little bit of crit fishing. A whole a whole lot of movement, so plenty of plenty of means to utilize quick actions. And I'd also and I'd also say we ha I also say a ti a very tiny bit of stance dancing. It's not the king of I think it the king of stance dancing is still is still the is disciple. still the disciple. That's that's not change that's not changing anytime soon. But I do like that we ha that we have, we essentially ha we essentially have what the fantasy of things like favorite enemy and ter and terrain expertise in van in vanilla are trying to be. But because of the fact that you have to pick a given terrain, um, the fantasy ends up be ends up being un ends up being entirely dependent on your DM, um, playing to that terrain. Mm -hmm. And well, you have. As a player, you've got no way of knowing that. Mm -hmm. My um, I think the best way to describe this particular class, if we were to give it a a, a two or three word description, is <clears throat> speedy skirmisher. That I that I could go that I could go with, um, and inc incidentally, what there is one other, um, pro one other proper ranger ar ranger archetype in game in gaming that we could have used. Ty Tylon slash the br slash um Solera Brimdor, in the uh, Shadow of War games, Shadow yes. of Mordor sh slash sh Shadow of War, um, microtransaction bullshit aside. It pr it pretty much f they've it's pretty much fitting. Um. Especially especially give especially given the f especially given the fact that you are doing a whole lot of a whole lot of skirmishing, but 
the what I do find what I do find kind of interesting is that is all this is, and I'm pretty sure this is why you were, you um you were regretting the fact that Ash isn't here for this. This <laughs> this entire ranger setup is not a caster. There's no magic involved, or at least none of the spell casting from Heavens and Heresies. You could still say that they've got magic hands. <laughs> but the but the and to, and to be to be honest, I'm per, I'm perfectly fine with it this way because look, it's very easy to make a class quote unquote interesting by adding spell casting. Ar I'd argue it's too easy. Which is why it isn't actually interesting. Mm -hmm. It's a um, it's much as I said as I said before. Appendix N is used too much like an escape button. Oh, are you are you in the middle? Are you in the middle of an old school D and D argument? Hit the Appendix N button to instantly win your argument. Scape. But when it comes to the. I think the other thing that cer that certainly helps is because of the way resonant because of the way resonance is set up. You could just as easily have a ranger in an urban environment and still make it relatively work. Mm hmm. Um. Actually, that does bring me to a question. I guess another clarification I would want. Mm hmm. For the purposes of terrain expert, would there be the same uh, feature that the druid has, where if you're in a developed terrain, you can you still gain the benefits of the terrain it once was, or is there going to be a specific terrain for urban places to give to the ranger exclusively? I get, I get the I get the feeling that I get the feeling it's going to be in the same. The same set, the same setup as the as the druid. Mm -hmm. It would it would just makes it would just make sense because doing it doing a city or an ur, or an urban terrain. Um, the problem with the problem with doing that is that is that there are many is that as we've seen in plenty in plenty of fantasy fiction, um, different environments are going to generate different kinds of cities. Heck, the heck, the um the randomly generated the randomly generated world building setup that we di that we did using the using Imperian's <laughs> deck um, <laughs> certainly has certainly has it has some advanced tech kind of cities and it has some it has some cities built into trees some built into swamps but I think in I think in those kind of situations. What should mat What it should matter is not the fact that it's a city, but but just the fact that it's util it's utilizing ter it's utilizing terrain, um, from from its from its given environment and reflecting as such. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and the and, sh like I said, the I the idea of you the idea of using a of having a city terrain just creates way too many problems worth worth noting. Yeah. Um but when it comes I still to think the clarification is necessary yeah. though. That seems to be the that seems to be the main th There's been some instances of of asking for additional clarification in this series, but I feel like we've done that the most with the ranger so far. There's mm -hmm. a lot of really good ideas, it's just that there might be a few um things that need to be Eroded in order to in order to make think in order to keep things a little bit sane, or to just give direction and and again, the the primary reason that we ask for this clarification and I know anyone else who has watched our previous episodes has heard me say this a hundred times. It is not to say something is bad. It is to prevent the fucking rules lawyers from exploiting loopholes as much as possible. You know what they say: an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Mm -hmm. That being said, when it comes to the con when it comes to the conclaves, um, the guide is the guide is very much the typical. Uh, I'd say is I'd say is the rangerist of the of the ranger fantasy. The person the person who you hire because you want because you're trying to go through the forest and not die. Mm-hmm. 
whereas, and the, and that cer that certainly applies with with him having the guide conclave seems to ha seems to lean the most towards support versus the versus the other two. Yeah. Um, Although I really like the survivor, it really does just bring to mind uh, the lone survivor of of Fallout. Actually, you know, you know what, you know what the survivor could also be. Hmm. John Rambo. <laughs> I've seen some people say that Re that Rambo should be a f should be a fighter class because of his build, and I'm like, no. That ca that kind of shit only applies if you're watching Rambo three. And who the fuck watches Rambo three? There was a third one. Like... <laughs> and but re but regardless, he is he is uh, he is in he is very much in that ri in that. Um, in that ranger archetype, the th the thing that the thing that I find I find kind of funny is that the survivor subclass would have would have as would have the most argument to to do the whole lone survivor kind of thing, despite the fact that the that one of the one of the key goals with the game is that tr is that trying to be a lone survivor is a myth. But as the I'd say I'd say the hunt I'd I'd say compared to the other two, the huntsman obviously is the crit fisher, but I'd say the huntsman has some of has some of the DNA of the fourth edition ranger. You know, when the when the striker role was very was very much a thing. You mark a target, you're able to fuck that target up a lot more easily than you are other targets. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um. The Beastmaster one will, pro will probably be the will probably be the animal companion one, um, but what I do what I do find very interesting with the, with this setup is that because of the fact that they're not re they're not relegated to a specific weapon list, um, there are certain there are certain we there are certain weapon and armor combinations. That people usually don't think of when they think druid that you can comp that you could do here. You, you mean ranger? Yeah, ra ranger. Sorry. So. So you you know how you know how we did you know how we did the gag of the of the um le uh, when it came to the um lance striking. <laughs> yeah, that that can be done. That can be done here. A bun a bun. Imagine a bun. Imagine a. Imagine a imagine a set of imagine a set of rangers that, um, because of the fact that they like carrying like carrying um alchemy kits. Imagine one having a sling, but instead of a rock in that sling, he has uh, he has a um a a sm a small vial of alchemist fire. <laughs> or if or if you or if you pref if you pref you know, I, I know this. Is, I know this probably wouldn't happen, but um, is it wrong that I, is it wrong that I eventually want to see a, want to see a build that is just um, Basara style Yukimura? <laughs> 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 just go around swinging double spears. I could see it. It would be funny. There are some feats you could do to probably get it. Mm-hmm. I got. I remember, I remember a long time ago, a, fr a friend of mine making making a f making a feat, a in um using using Saga Edition's rule set, solely because he solely because he wanted to do um three sword style from One Piece. Uh. And three sword style still doesn't make any goddamn sense. No, and that's why I love it. <laughs> look, you look. You and I are the last people in the room who should talk about anything making sense. What are you talking about? Everything I do makes perfect sense. Bullshit. We only follow the highest echelon of logical science at Zadari Enterprises. That's the reason why we created micro black holes to power everything. <laughs> 
at first I was gonna go. You aren't. You are clearly not a Vulcan because I have because I haven't tried to shoot you yet. But I'd I would say th I would say that this that this particular take on the Ranger is a, is most certainly leaps and bounds a better a better approach because it actually has a motif that it's filling instead of just di instead of just dipping into other things. And I I know I know that um. I know that thing. I know that things like Glo like Glo like um Gloom Warden in Five E can can be utilized to make the Ranger not suck, especially if you but have especially if you have builds so that so that you can so that mm -hmm. um you can you can mess with enemies' dark vision, i.e. But <laughs> go ahead. That just delves into the whole pay not to suck bullshit, though. Yeah, which we which we've already talked we've already talked about that or how um. How dual how dual wielding is not worth the trouble in a lot in a lot of editions because of the fact that you've got to do so much work just to be competent. Whereas here, dual wielding's really good. Remember when we first went over the dual wielding rules, mm -hmm. Monk? Where I said no matter what, you're gonna be doing <laughs> half damage at the first hit and then either full or half damage at the second hit. Yeah. Uh Good times. Mm -hmm. Good times. But with but with that in but with that in mind, let's see what we've got next week. Oh, next week is next week is the rogue, the thief. Mm -hmm. And if you listen close in the distance, you can hear Locke screaming at us. Treasure hunter. <laughs> If you, if you listen in the, if you listen even further in the distance, you can hear Ash screaming at us. <laughs> so rogue and thief are not the same thing. Whenever I I hear that I hear that kind of thing a lot, and to and to that to that thing I say, yeah. And I'm, I'm first off, I'm pretty sh I'm pretty sure you're gonna I'm pretty sure the next thing you're gonna tell me is that fighting man and fighter are not the same thing. <laughs> and se and second, if it walks like a duck, talks like a duck, and quacks like a duck, it sure is fucking a goose. Unless it's a goose acting like a duck because it's a terrible, horrible goose. Honk. <laughs> and that is our our obligatory untitled goose game uh, joke, everybody. Thank you. We'll be here all week. <laughs> um, but when it com but that'll cer that'll certainly be an interesting one because the the rogue ha the rogue has had a has had a good run of luck over the years. I mean, it's one of the original four, so there's that. So there's that. But it's also it is. But I'll probably have to bring up how the how the rogue how the rogue exemplif exemplifies the skill system issue that i've ha that i've had in um in D in D &D, in D &D ever since they introduced a skill system proper cuz whenever i say that D&D &D does not was never really designed for for um skills people always bring up well the rogue has a set of skills that it has that's basically its class features that's not the same thing as what i'm talking about with a skill system Hmm. Uh, and of course, some people do the whole. Oh, all you need is just four classes, which um is kind of, is kind of which sounds a little bit too much like the stereotype of, oh we we only need you know, all we had all we had back then was just three channels and that's the way we liked it. I'm sure I'm sure you did. I'm also I'm also sure that's irrelevant. But with the but. I'd say the I'd say the other thing that'll be that'll the other reason that the rogue will be interesting is up until this point one of the really big things that we've been seeing a lot in the class design has been an emphasis on synergy. There isn't a, every class has got ha, while some have it more some have it in more ways than others. Everybody has some measure of being able to do be, being being able to benefit the rest of the party along with themselves. Mm -hmm. The rogue, however, has a bad habit of be of being of being a one man party. 
Well, that's because the rogue is the stereotype of the ultimate skill monkey. Mm -hmm. And whenever you try and spread that around, of course, much like much like giving um, fighters something interesting to do, the traditionalists end up um, crying. Probably, be probably because they're members of Clan Jade Falcon and they don't like anything. <laughs> But that'll. But it'll. But the the rogue is is one of is one of those is one of those cases where the romantic the romanticization of the rogue is the is the guy is the guy who does his own th the guy who does his own thing approach. Um, the the this is and this is the reason why I always bring up um, Geralt in this in these kind of in these kind of conversations. That's kind. Of, that's kind of the fantasy of of it. the the ex the expert safe the expert safe cracker or, uh, or secure or security expert who's able to who's able to get in and out, um, by themselves. You mean Garrett, not Geralt. Yeah. It's the pro it's the problem when the it's the problem when you have similar overlapping syllables. Yeah. No. I was. I. I... I, I felt like I was like, mm, that is not a Geralt. You meant Garrett. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so many G names, so little time. But we could the... call them all Guy, but I don't think they uh, they shout enough for that. No. <laughs> but the but that that is that is going to be that is going to be a interesting. Um, affair when we get when we get to it. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, <coughs> and I had and I had something in my throat. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody.